In fact, much more than a million tons. For example, more than the weight of all the half million elephants in Africa. Hi. That seems remarkable, but if we fill this teaspoon with the stuff that neutron stars are made from, then the mass would be more than that. Let me explain why that is. We know from Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment that atoms are mostly empty space. If you want to check out what Rutherford's experiment is, then there's a link in the video description below. To show how much empty space that is, imagine a single atom in the middle of the world's largest sports stadium. If we magnified that atom up until it filled the stadium, then the nucleus, which accounts for almost all the mass of the atom, the mass of the electrons is negligible, that nucleus would be about the size of a fly in the middle of the stadium. Now, in a neutron star, which is formed by the collapse of a giant sun, the pressure causes the protons to absorb the electrons so that the star becomes a sphere of closely packed neutrons. And the total density is absolutely unbelievable. That's the general explanation. What follows is the calculation of the density of the nucleus of an atom, which we estimate to be similar to the density of the material in a neutron star. Measurements made from scattering experiments show that the size of a nucleus is directly proportional to its atomic number, the number of nucleons in the nucleus. Because volume is proportional to r cubed, the cube root of the atomic number must be proportional to the radius. By inserting a constant, we have this equation. To base the calculation on something, we'll take an example of carbon with an atomic number of 12. From the last equation, the radius, therefore, would be the value of the constant multiplied by the cube root of 12. And since volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed, we've got an expression for the volume an expression we need to use in a moment. I'm aiming to work out the density, and for that we will need the mass of one atom. We could take the easy way and look that up, but we can work it out from first principles. We know that a mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams, and in that one mole there are 6 times 10 to 23 atoms. That's Avogadro's number. Dividing gives us the mass of one atom, and Almost all of that mass is within the nucleus. And we need this expression on the next page. Putting together the expression we have for the volume of one nucleus, which is given, and the mass of one atom, which is effectively the mass of one nucleus, we can calculate the density, which is mass divided by volume. That will be in kilograms per meter cubed. Now, you can push those numbers into a calculator yourself but it turns out that it is 2.3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic metre. Going back to the teaspoon, has a volume of 5 millilitres, and therefore the mass of nuclear material in this teaspoon would be the volume multiplied by the density. And that is 11.5 times 10 to the 11 kilograms, or 11.5 times 10 to the 8 tonnes. So if we'd filled our teaspoon with the material from a neutron star, where the nuclei of atoms are all packed together, that it will weigh over one billion tonnes. I hugely underestimated the mass. A neutron star is the collapsed core of a supermassive giant. There are thought to be around a billion within the Milky Way, but they're hard to observe. Apart from black holes, they're the most dense bodies we know of. As a massive star collapses, the intense pressure pushes together the protons and electrons, so the whole thing becomes made of neutrons, all packed together. Those that we can observe are very hot, spinning extremely quickly, and with a diameter of around about 10 kilometres, but with a mass greater 
than that of our sun. As we've calculated, a matchbox full of neutron star material would weigh several billion tons. Thank you for watching.